Battery costs just keep falling. That's very good news. But you know what else is news? Maybe not good that uh, taxes are going up and coming down at the same time, sometimes both. And for that matter, it's all we're talking about the safest car there is. I'm Brian. Welcome to Futuraza. <laughs> Joined as I so often am by Mark from the Tesla Life, a decades long EV enthusiast, an owner of electrification since the day it became practical in his life. He was a Volt driver. He's now uh, in a Tesla and he loves it. Uh, I assure you. Uh, don't ask him. Okay, let's ask him. Mark, what do you think? Absolutely true. Absolutely true. Love it. Yeah. Never going back to gas. It's a. Yeah. Uh, it's been a wonderful ride for the past, uh, gee, I guess it's been uh, over 10 years now. Yeah. And if you're anything like me or many of the viewers, we've been enthusiasts a lot longer than we've been owners. Yeah. Um, I did have a 2008 Zen Electric neighborhood car. Wow. Uh, yeah, it was genuinely terrible, but I loved it. <laughs> and, every, and everywhere you go, people are like, what is that? <laughs> Because it was so tiny. You look it up, guys. 2008 Zen Electric. I had the uh, soft top. I mean, more of the moon roof. But either way, let's get some good news going up in here, huh? Uh, what we've got is we're starting with this one. Battery costs have actually dropped 90%. Now, I know a lot of people will look at this and say, no, they haven't. No, they haven't because I needed a replacement and it still cost, you know, a fortune. Why would that be? Well, because, of course, the replacement batteries that uh, are sitting on shelves ready to be sold to consumers are partially connected to the old EVs that they represent. So guess mm. what? The costs of those replacement units are kind of baked in already. You're not getting the newest technology in batteries. You're not getting a lot of the enhancements and savings that we've seen over the past 15 years. You're paying top dollar because you're replacing a vehicle from 2012 or 2015. Yes. And it's not always the parts that get you, but the labor. Oh, I, I recently had a $350 repair to my, uh, to my furnace. Uh, and it, the part was actually, uh, $12. Uh, but knowing which part and how to replace it, that's the part that costs the rest of the 350. And I'm not bitter. I get it. He's got expenses. He's got labor, all that good stuff. And he's, you know, a professional. Uh, a lot of that's going to be labor to change out a battery. But what it means is that Tesla that you used to buy for 50 or 60,000 is now 35, 38, right? Absolutely. It's uh, those are the economics that we see at play here uh, in this chart. You see uh, in 2008, you're looking at over $1,400 per gigawatt hour. And uh, now in 2024, which is just off this chart, we're about one hundred and forty three dollars uh, yeah. for the kil same kil uh, kilowatt same amount hour. kilowatt hour. Not we're not doing gigawatts. Oh, I'm just sorry. Yet. My mistake. Kilowatt That's, hour. Uh, not not until uh, nineteen eighty eight. I believe eighty eight. Yeah. Uh, so and what's funny is they went to the future in twenty fifteen. Ah, what a different vision than I expected. <laughs> And uh, I like that they use current dollars, which I think means electrical and constant dollars are what I run out of. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's right. I feel like Karnak the Magnificent. <laughs> steep, steep decline is due to improvements in battery technology and chemistry, as well as improvements in manufacturing and increases in production volume. Think about the machine you build to make one million of something versus a billion of something. Yeah. It's a different machine. It's going to cost you more to build it, but the longer it runs, the cheaper those batteries get. Um, well, think of how cheap the batteries are that you get at Costco or the dollar store. The machine that makes them probably costs millions, but they make so many, it doesn't matter. So that's good news. And there's plenty of reason to believe this will continue into the future. So I think maybe we should cover our medium news, our in-between news. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> states scramble to replace gas tax cash. 13 states give drivers an incentive to buy before charging them extra for it. Washington state is one such state. Um, I don't remember if Oregon is, 
Oregon has had incentives. The pool ran out very quickly. Uh, Washington, I think, currently has incentives. Yeah. Uh, but I know in Washington, we do get hit with an extra EV gas, an EV tax on our registration. Which what, is, what is that tax? I want to say 200 maybe, 200 okay. a year. And you think, well, that's reasonable. I mean, especially if you knew how many miles I drive, you'd think, oh, that's definitely reasonable. But I drove most of those miles in other states. That's right. And I didn't, <laughs> and I did not give them one penny. So kind of your, uh... and also of the the gas taxes I would pay here, a lot of it's not state uh, tax. A lot of it's federal tax, only the state portion. So really they're making out like Frito Banditos over here. Yeah, this this article points out also that that really EV drivers are a real drop in the bucket when it comes to gas taxes anyways for the amount of EVs that are on the road compared to gas vehicles. The real issue here is some gas vehicles getting better mileage over time. So they're seeing a reduction in gas taxes being collected anyways because people are moving from an F-150 truck down into a sedan or to a Prius or to something else that gets better gas mileage. This is my issue with this whole thing. Uh, when they're charging the EV some sort of annual amount is that aren't we really, uh, shouldn't we be charged at maybe a Prius level? as opposed to what uh, the 200 or 250 amount that they pick out of thin air, because really the Prius owner, because he moved down from an F-150 to a Prius, he's not getting charged an extra 150 bucks because he reduced his gas tax bill. But yet I, as an EV owner, I am getting hit with a 250 bill because I don't burn any gas. So well, this is yeah. something that, uh, strikes me as is unfair to ev owners well we're trying to keep it light here mark the <laughs> gas tax long the backbone of transportation of uh, funding has lost potency as vehicles become more efficient like you just said and what i love is this is the rest uh this is the kicker the rest of us subsidize their use of the roads yeah 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 um but aren't i subsidizing uh your uh pollution? Aren't I subsidizing other people's health care because of the emissions from the tailpipe? Why should I not have to pay for tailpipe emissions? So great. Charge me for my EV to use your roads, but I want to charge you for your dyno burner to pollute my lungs. Ooh, don't like that, do we? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, hey, fine. So uh, we got to get back to the good news. And here we go. The safest sedan ever built it catches the guardrails exactly as it's supposed to. And you can see this is a, a pretty aggressive angle of approach and it just folds up the way it's supposed to. Thoughts? That's incredible. Like just the slow motion of uh, the car destructing and taking out this guardrail, first of all, is just amazing to watch. It's fantasizing. Just, just look at the parts as it peels back and uh, the guardrail does its job to slow the vehicle down. But man, that's incredible. I love that. And the vehicle came up off the ground. So dramatic. Uh, here's another high speed of it. Wow. Yeah. That, that really, in real time, shows the speed it's coming in. That, that, is, that is one fast vehicle hitting the, the guard at a, a pretty sharp angle. Pretty aggressive angle. I would say that that is as aggressive as you could hit that guardrail um, at that speed. Going at highway on, speed, yeah. Going at highway speed. You yeah. can't get much steeper than that. Um, and But even still, you can see that those passengers would not even have broken legs. Uh, yeah, that's a... Is that the same shot? Must be. Yeah, yeah. different angle. Boy. Oh, yeah. It's... Uh, my hat's off to the engineers at Tesla. When there was that tragic incident with the doctor who tried to harm his family and the children were unscathed and he and his wife both had significant injuries, but they did not die. Um, I said, this is a real testament to, uh, you know, to engineering. Yeah, to safety as a, as a first priority. 
Wow, um, that was hustling. Yeah. That's a, a most replayed segment there. Bam. And as, oh. as mentioned, the uh, the California drive off a cliff. Like, you couldn't get a worse scenario than being on the PCH and driving off one of those immense cliffs into, you know, the, the, the rocky beach below of the Pacific Ocean. And, and some headlines said they plummeted hundreds. No, no. They just bounded down the rocks, which is horrible. And it yep. clearly had damage all over except inside the people. So that's uh, fascinating stuff. Oh, and that's it. I will play for you the um, the epic music that I was going to play. Let's see if I can get it too. It's, I uh, have been using this fun, fun music generator here. Yeah, that's AI. Can you hear it? I can hear it. Yeah, it just keeps getting better the longer you go. Um, I I gave it. Uh, it's like an intro to Phantom of the Opera. Oh yeah. So what what had happened is the reason I've, we've got so many generated is in the car on our road trip down to the X takeover. Uh, we got bored of listening to music and decided to Bluetooth it in and make our own. So we would just come up with the most complicated or interesting prompts we could and then listen to the songs. We had a, you know, better live music than the Titanic. Hmm. Might, might need to think about that a little yeah, more. That's not a great testament there. I feel like I could do better. Yeah, isn't that great? That's awfully good for something I couldn't play during, but if that was playing now, just imagine it was playing during the crash scene. That would have been, <laughs> I guess I could have sent it to the editor and had him put it over, but I do want this... to, I do want to talk to the, the people out there listening though, yes. watching. Oh yes. I want them to, if you already own an EV, join an EV association, learn about what's happening out there. And if you don't like some policy that are happening that the government is introducing, you're going to be able to reach out and make your point a lot clearly known to the government in mass with more and more people. And that's what an EV association can help you do is get together with people like minded and you can express your interests and in what you feel is best uh, for the EV movement to the government in mass. It's a winner. Doesn't take much go out and become part of an EV association. So here is uh, myeva.org, a network of electric vehicle advocates. This might, might be one that has a bunch of options, but put in the name of your city and EV association. There's also brand specific ones. I know Rivians have a club. I know, I don't think Lucid's have enough models to have clubs yet, but in some areas they might, maybe in Southern California. Uh, but these are uh, these are great groups. I've um, been to a couple events for the Seattle one. I'm a member of the Oregon one because it's much closer. Uh, and I'm a member of three different Tesla owners clubs because I'm on the border. So I got to do Washington and Oregon. And I'm in Michigan so much that a lot of people think I live there. So I, I go to so many events. They're like, well, every time I see you, you're in Michigan. I'm like, I know. And, well, that's because you are here. And people in Texas think I uh, live there, but I don't. I just exist in between. It's very strange. Traveling all the time. I am traveling all the time. I'm sure everyone already knows, but I will say it again. I am going uh, to be in uh, Ocala, Florida for the uh, Florida Cyber Fest, where you will get to, and this is not a joke, you get to drive your cyber truck on the off-road course. Ooh. The hill climbs, the mud and all of that. And there will be a beach buggy uh, racer tournament. Um, but because it's not a supercharger, it won't automatically link you up to play against other drivers. That's disappointing. Uh, but that would save a lot of time. But hey, what are you going to do? And there'll be prizes and there'll be me. I'll be there amongst others. We might even get Casey Green to wow. join us. But we shall see. Uh, because I am... I have been promoted to a and friend, uh, as as noted by the fact that I have appeared on Casey Green and Friends. 
Uh, and he said, you always were. I'm like, yeah, but that doesn't work for the joke. Come on, man. So uh, what do we miss? What do we misunderstand? Leave it. Thank you for hanging out with me and my buddy, Mark. We have a good time uh, twice a week. Um, we hang out more than that, but we only have a good time twice a week. So <laughs> the rest again, of the time is boring. The rest of the time, <laughs> the rest of the time, we're just like, Jesus, this guy again. So, uh, yeah, everybody else, uh, like, subscribe, do the usual. Head on over to uh, the Tesla Life, see what they're up to. They've got a lot of great shows. They do a big one every week, they do a couple smaller ones every week, and every now and then a special show in between. And it's always, you know, cutting edge stuff. It's the latest news, it's all kinds of insights. It's worth a visit. Uh, any closing thoughts, Mark? No, I've been here too long already. <laughs> I've been here too long. Just let me go, boss. All right. Stay tuned and juicy. You know what you're doing. And I can't wait to hear from you clever robots in Florida. Unless you're an alligator.